Hi there, everyone. We've reached lesson 159, and it follows on the one we did yesterday. The one yesterday said, I learn to give as I receive. This one says specifically, I give the miracles I have received. Remember, miracles are those shifts in perception that come from being in my right mind, seeing love everywhere. It's being aware of love's presence. So no one can give what he has not received. To give a thing requires first you have it in your own possession. So here the laws of heaven and the world agree, heaven being a joined state, of course. But here they also separate. The world believes that to possess a thing, it must be kept. Salvation teaches otherwise. To give is how to recognize you have received. It's the proof that what you have is yours, since clearly you cannot give what you do not have. You understand that you are healed when you give healing. You accept forgiveness as accomplished in yourself when you forgive. You recognize your brother as yourself, and thus do you perceive that you are whole. In other words, if you recognize your brother as yourself, you're recognizing oneness, sameness, which is automatically the same thing as wholeness. There's no miracle you cannot give, for all are given you. In other words, we're given the ability to see everything with love. Remembering a miracle is that ability to be aware of the presence of love. So receive them now by opening the storehouse of your mind where they are already laid and giving them away. Remember all of the things that we want to experience this changed perception where everything is loving and lovable is already present in our minds. It's not like we have to develop it, find it, do anything about it to make it be there. It's already present. We keep forgetting that. We keep thinking this is something we have to extract from someplace else or create a thing that's not here yet. Not true. Okay. Christ's vision, that awareness of love, just to keep it simple, is the miracle. It comes from far beyond itself, for it reflects eternal love and the rebirth, actually not the rebirth of love, but the rebirth of the awareness of love, which never dies, but has been kept obscure. That's what the blocks to the awareness of love's presence are all about. They obscure ever-present omnipresent love. Christ's vision pictures heaven. It pictures joining or oneness, for it sees a world so like to heaven that what God or love created perfect can be mirrored here. The darkened glass the world presents can show but twisted images in broken parts. The real world, the world where you see the light in everything, pictures heaven's innocence pictures the innocence of oneness. Christ's vision is the miracle in which all miracles are born. Christ's vision is their source, remaining with each miracle you give, choosing to see with love, and yet remaining yours. Christ's vision is the bond by which the giver and receiver are united in extension here on earth as they are one in heaven. The extension that it's talking about is, remember, it says when you're trying to get rid of something in your mind, you project it onto someone else as if seeing it out there, it's like, oh, it has nothing to do with me. Extension is when you're extending something that you actually want to keep and you want someone else to have because it is a gift. Big difference, okay, between projection and extension. Extension is always about extending the good stuff. Christ beholds no sin in anyone, and in his sight, the sinless are the innocent are one. Their holiness was given by his Father and himself. Christ's vision is the bridge between the worlds, and you can safely trust its power to carry you from this world into the one made holy by forgiveness, by letting go of the grievances, which are the blocks. 
Things which seem quite solid here are just merely shadows there. Transparent, faintly seen, at times forgotten altogether, and never able to obscure the light that shines beyond them. Holiness has been restored to vision and the blind can see. That would be us. It's like we're walking around with sacks over our heads and we can't see what's right in front of us. This is the Holy Spirit's single gift, the treasure house to which you can appeal with perfect certainty for all the things that can contribute to your happiness. They're all here already. All can be received just by asking. Here the door is never locked. No one is denied his least request or his most urgent need. There's no sickness not already healed. Listen to that. No lack unsatisfied. No need unmet within this golden treasury of Christ. When we start being as devoted to love as we are to guilt now, this is what we get. So here does the world remember what was lost when it was made, when we fell into this separated state in our minds, when we started to hallucinate. For here it is repaired, made new again, but in a different light. What was to be the home of sin, this was the place we were going to hide out because we felt so guilty, now becomes the center of redemption and the hearth of mercy, where the suffering are healed and welcome. No one will be turned away from this new home where his salvation waits. No one is a stranger to him. No one asks for anything of him except they just want him to accept his welcoming. Christ's vision is the holy ground in which the lilies of forgiveness set their roots. Now, this is a phrase that's used in the text to really talk about love and compassion. So this is the home of love and compassion. And those qualities and experiences can be brought from here, from the holy ground, to the world, to our normal world. But they can't grow in its unnourishing and shallow soil. They need the light and the warmth and the kindly care that Christ's charity provides. They need the love with which he looks on them. Now, remember all the they's in this paragraph are referring to instances and experiences and offerings of love and compassion. And they become his messengers of love, who give as they received. So take from his storehouse that its treasures may increase. Remember what you give, there's more of. His lilies, his love, does not leave home when carried back into the world. The roots remain. They don't leave their source. We don't leave our source. Love never leaves its source. But carry its beneficence with them, and they turn the world into a garden like the one they came from, and to which they go again with added fragrance. Now they are twice blessed. The messages they brought from Christ have been delivered and returned to them, and they return them gladly unto him. So behold the store of miracles set out for you to give. Aren't you worth the gift when God appointed it to be given you? So don't judge God's son. Don't judge creation, but follow in the way he has established. Christ has dreamed the dream of a forgiven world. It is his gift whereby a sweet transition can be made from death to life, from hopelessness to hope. So let's dream an instant with him. His dream awakens us to the truth of us, what we are, where we are. His vision gives the means for a return to our unlost and everlasting sanctity. That's our holiness in God or in love. Beautiful lesson. So keep remembering, stated in yet another way, everything we're looking for is right here. Only our grievances get in the way, so we want to keep offering and extending love to everything. That's how all of these words take on life and substance and meaning. Have a great practice. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye.